MCC Library Virtual Open Genealogy Lab is proud to present Daniel Horowitz from MyHeritage. Daniel is the genealogy expert at MyHeritage, providing key contribution liaisoning with genealogy societies, bloggers and media, as well as lecturing and attending conferences around the world. Dedicated to genealogy since 1986, he was the teacher and the study guide editor of the family history project called Searching for My Roots in Venezuela for 15 years. He's involved in several crowdsourced digitization and transcription projects and holds a broad level position at the Israel Genealogy Research Association. Today, he'll be talking about how technology has revitalized genealogy, opening new frontiers for research, persevering and sharing, maintaining the thrill of the detective hunt. My heritage key technologies are precisely the intersection of technology and genealogy. For instance, using smart matches, record matches, instant discoveries, search connect, global name translation, DNA matching, pedigree map, and consistency checker are just to name a few. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Daniel Horowitz. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be able to uh, address you from Israel, uh, the headquarters of uh, my heritage. Well, right now I'm at home, probably like uh, most of you <laughs> or all of you. Uh, but yes, uh, my heritage is an Israeli company. Um, and I'm here and I'm here to talk and to tell you all about my heritage. Um, I don't know how many of you have accounts on MyHeritage, but I'm going to try to start from the very basics and guide you through most of what MyHeritage offers. Uh, you have a question panel uh, right there on your screen. I know some of you have already used it uh, to uh, said that uh, you had some problems of audio, but I think, I hope uh, you all sorted out already. Uh, Suzanne, if you want to uh, mute your microphone, so I will not mute yourself, uh, just to avoid any possible uh, noise from the background. So if you want to uh, ask questions, I'm more than uh, happy with it. Uh, and I will try to answer them as we go. And if not, I will do it at the end. So let's start with a little bit of the motto of uh, my heritage. Uh, right now, what we are, what we pursued is to help you, to empower you to discover what makes you who you are, uh, trying to connecting your past, your present, and your future. And this is something that my heritage is doing since 2005, when first started. And it started actually as a family tree company uh, with software and then very fast after that with a website. Um, the second step was to add historical records. Right now we have uh, almost 12 billion of those, some very exclusive databases uh, uh, also from around the world. The last part that we added is the DNA and we have almost 4 million test or, or samples in our database, uh, both people buying a MyHeritage DNA kit or uploading from other companies. My, MyHeritage is one of the companies that allows you to import your digital file from other companies. Um, and the DNA is kind of divided in two between the genealogical DNA and the health DNA. Um, one second, okay, I'm missing here a button. Uh, we report on the, um, on the genealogy DNA, uh, ethnicity regions and matches, and the health report has so far 36 uh, different issues that reports, and very soon we're going to add a few more over there. Now, all this, very important since the very beginning, in 42 languages. MyHeritage is the only website, software, or inclusive mobile app to support so many languages. And this is one of our key features uh, on our strengths. Uh, definitely having users from all over the world, having records from all over the world, allows everybody 
to find their families. We try to be as friendly and approachable as possible. Not always we uh, <laughs> achieve that, uh, but we're tr always trying to improve and always welcome feedbacks. We also, as I said before, have some exclusive databases because MyHeritage not only uh, does partnerships with libraries and other repositories, we also help them uh, digitizing and transcribing the information. So it's not just buying, but also being an active player in the field on that. And well, people say that we have superior technology. Um, I'm originally a computer engineer, so I understand a little bit about this technology and I pretend to show you today and to demonstrate you about this. So I will leave you uh, to decide this after today's lecture. Now, um, as I said, I'm going to start right from the beginning. Uh, and this is the homepage that you will encounter if you don't have an account on MyHeritage and why not if it's free. At least you can open an account and try some of my heritage features for free without any problem. You do that by uh, typing your basic information and you can see over there that my heritage will also ask you for your parents' information. This is because you, on this step, you're not only a opening a free account, but you're also building or starting to build your family tree. Now, for those of you who already have a family tree someplace else, and if that place, software or website allows you to export a JetCom, you can, without any problem, import it into MyHeritage and the process is going to be a little bit faster uh, and easier than what I'm going to show you now. Uh, if you are new to genealogy, definitely I will suggest you to start with this because what my heritage is going to do afterward is asking you for your grandparents, both from your mother's side and your father's side. And we're going to ask you for very few details, names, places, if the person is alive or not. And this is something very important because if an individual is marked as leaving, his information is going to be privatized, meaning that other people not invited to the website will not be able to see any information about them. If the person is marked as deceased, then the information is public. Everybody will be able to find that individual uh, on my heritage, and that is exactly what you should want to do it, because um, that's the way that people will find connections with you. Now, hopefully, whoever fills their seven uh, individuals, yourself, two parents, and four grandparents, that gives what we call the magic seven, uh, is going to show a screen like this, where my heritage is going to ask you if this is the right person. 99% of the cases, yes, it is. And most of the new people coming to genealogy will say, wow, how do you know so many information about my parents or my grandparents? A few of the hardcore genealogists will say, hmm, where is this information coming from? Well, I'm going to answer that in a second. But before, let's agree that this is, yes, my person. So if that is true, my heritage will allow you to copy to your tree up to 50 individuals with all the information, the most amount of information that we can find for you. So if you are all excited about this, you will click on add to the tree and all this information is going to be copied from your tree. This is what my heritage calls instant discoveries. Now, the instant discoveries is based on previous technology that we had, smart matches and record matches. And I am going to explain both in just a couple more of minutes. 
Now, the unique benefit of this is that with one click, you are copying, you are extracting lots of information about your close family in just seconds. Now, I also have to give you a word of caution because the source, the information is coming from other people's family trees in some cases or records. But this is information that by no means my heritage has verified. You know what happened in genealogy, garbage in, garbage out. Yes, so you need to be careful uh, and always after you decided to copy all the information, you can go over it and you can review it and you can delete it if you don't want it or you can contact actually the person that collaborated and submitted that information. I will show you that also just in a few seconds. Now, what if you already have a family tree on MyHeritage? Or what if after a few weeks or months, you have a new discovery? Yes, you can do that, you can have that. And we will show it to you on your family tree just like that. You can see how based on somebody in my tree, I can get up to, again, 50 people from a specific branch. You are not obligated to accept every discovery, but if you, depending on the branch, if you are researching that family, definitely that will help you. Now, um, I know people out there are saying, there is no way you're gonna bring me information about my family because I am researching for many, many years. I know everything that I need to know about them. No new people can bring. And that may be the case. But my heritage offers you a little bit more in the instant discoveries. As you can see, and I am uh, pointing out to you the sub-menu of the instant discoveries, we have divided that into people or photos. The part that I already explained to you is the part of the, pic the uh, people. I would like to show you how the photo section works. So let's click on this discovery of 10 photos. And what happened here is that my heritage detected that in other family trees, the same people you have, they have images and here you don't have images for them. You see the silhouettes on the left side, those are coming from your tree. The part in the right side, you can see it's coming from different people in different countries, different family trees. So you can do a few things here first and very uh, desirable. You should contact the person and say, hey, how come you have a picture of my great grandmother that I have never seen if I am the genealogy of the family? So always go ahead and contact the person. Now, the other thing is that you may not care for everybody in your family tree. Yes, I know, but it's true. My family tree have, has 7,700 individuals. Believe me, uh, this Juliet is not necessarily close related to me and I don't care so much if I have a picture or not from her. So don't tell anybody, but at this stage, I'm going to uncheck the uh, check mark in the corner and I'm going to import only nine photos to my tree. And you can do this on batches of 10 a day. After all, we don't want you to get too exhausted doing this task over and over. Now, if the other person did the work as they should, you can also see the original photo and hopefully you will have more people tagged in that photo. So you are not only gaining a photo that you are missing, you're not only gaining a photo of a person that you don't have in your tree, you also may gain a piece of history and a lot of faces that will uh, en enrich your family tree. Now, I mentioned before 
the smart matches technology. This is no other thing that comparing your family tree, the information that you submitted, with what we have in our databases. We're talking about uh, 39, 40 million family trees, 3.8 billion profiles. So we try to not only find another Daniel Horowitz, uh, that would be nonsense, but uh, if you don't have a specific details like the birth date or the birthplace, death date or death place, we are using also close relative because there is only one Daniel Horowitz that is married to the son of or sibling of or had kids named X and Y. So by taking all those pieces of information, we're able to find good matches for you. The benefit, of course, besides being able to copy and extract that information to your tree very easily, is again the possibility to collaborate, to contact other people researching your branches and probably even somebody close related to you that you had no idea they exist. The same caution you need to be need to be applied here because not everybody does the research properly. Not everybody puts real and truth information on the smart matches. How do you know if you have a smart match? Well, there are a few ways to know that. One, probably the most uh, blamed one, is the green icon that you see on the family tree. Also on the top of the, uh, of the website, you have a black strip over there. We will tell you how many uh, smart matches and record matches you have. When you click either uh, on a green icon or in this case, what I did, I went to the discovery menu and I click in this case, matches by people. And there is two ways to see your matches. And those two ways allows you to see the record matches and the smart matches. I am right now looking at my smart matches and I prefer to do this by people because I think it's easier and better for you. Let me explain you why. You can see that people on the left are coming from my tree. People on the right are the matches. So I know how many matches I have for each individual. But more than that, I can see what new information that match is bringing me. So let's go into one of it, for example. And I can see from the different places, the different matches. I can see different uh, people building their family trees. It's going to be sorted by the best match and the best match is the one that brings you more new information in this case i'm getting not only the personal photo but also the birthday the father the mother the siblings my heritage is telling me all what i will gain now up to here is uh free actually i think you can go one step further in order to contact that person, Laura Smith, in this case, in the first case, uh, you will need to have a paying subscription on MyHeritage. In order to accept a match or reject a match, uh, you will need a paying subscription. Yes, what if this match is not good? Well, very little chances, but let's say that yes, you can always click the X in the upper right corner and my heritage will offer you to just reject this match without any problem another option that you may have is ignore this person because remember this may be a far away individual in your tree and you may not want to be bothered for him so you have also the option to ignore or because this is coming from your cousin's tree which took or you gave him all the information and you know that he really is not going to research on himself and he's not going to bring you more information that you need okay so we are now ready to go one step further and review that match in more detail my heritage is going to give you a very detailed 
a comparison of what you have in the tree and what the other person have and what is going to be new information for you or if it's modified, if it's different. Also, other relatives, close relative to that individual that you can take advantage and copy. And at the very end, you will find a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison again from the family trees. So this will tell me how good genealogy the other person is, how many people it has, and what is the structure on the tree. Here also, as you can see uh, below that uh, tree, is the uh, option to reject this match. You can, of course, write comments or the logical step, if the, all this is right, is to confirm this match. And then MyHeritage is going to offer you a possible, uh, the possibility to extract the new information with those arrows that you're seeing here in the middle. Uh, you can scroll down uh, and you can just click on the different arrows. Always a source citation is going to be added to that individual because you are taking information from someplace else. It doesn't matter what the other person uses it as a source. The source for you is the other website. That is also why you definitely need to contact the other person and ask him where he got all this information. Now you go to the very end and you click save to tree and then all the information is going to be automatically copied. Why this is so success? Well, besides the technology that we have and we are improving it constantly, we have huge amount of data. As I said, we have 3.8 billion names and more than 100 million pictures. And those are very important because you can see who is the other person and you can recognize if this is really your relative. Also, the fact that we work in 42 languages means that we're going to bring you data from other countries. And yes, I know you're already thinking, well, but if somebody's writing an email or creating an, uh, I'm sorry, writing and creating a, a family tree in another language, how can I merge it and how my heritage knows if this is my family? I will answer that in just a couple more of minutes. But the biggest advantage is the collaboration, the possibility to talk, contact the other person and ask questions and interact with them. Also, you can invite them to see your website or uh, you can request to see his or hers all family tree. Now, how do you receive those smart matches? Well, by building a tree online on myheritage.com, you also have an option to use our free software family tree builder who syncs with the software and also, the third option will be to upload a JETCOM. Every time a new tree is coming into our database, we run the uh, smart match technology all over and we compare your tree to other trees and other trees to your tree and we find those matches. Now, also, every time that you edit or add information, we will run smart matches, what we call ad hoc for that specific branch or group of members in your family and you may receive a smart matches instantaneously um, after you upload the jetcom or uh, sync the family tree builder also uh, you will get those and of course continuously because every week we are checking for new matches as new trees are coming in and although we would love for you to come every week or every day and check for new matches, MyHeritage will contact you and will send you an email like the one you have in the screen and will tell you that we found new matches for you. But more than that, uh, when the other person who matches you goes and confirmed a match, you can come here and you will see an email 
that says that the other person confirmed and you can just go into the website and double confirm that match. The match will be double confirmed by you and the other person uh, and you can continue doing your research with the new information as well. The other technology I mentioned is the record matches, which is extremely similar to the smart matches, but instead of comparing your people with other family trees, we are comparing now with the billions of records that we have in the multiple categories. Uh, right now, uh, it's almost 12 billion records. Of course, that the more people you have in your tree, better chances both for the smart matches and the record matches to work. How do you know about the record matches? Because we have a, a brown icon on the card of the person in the family tree or as i said before in the top bar of the website now you will notice that this time under discoveries i selected matches by source i think it's easier if you concentrate in one collection and you go over that collection and you extract all the information that that collection offers, not only like you, but for all the individuals that you have in your family tree. Uh, and by the way, talking about today being the Ellis Island Day, uh, we have a copy of Ellis Island database with the huge advantage that we have indexed not only the name of the passengers, but also the names that uh, families or, or the family member that the immigrant had to say he's coming to visit or, or to stay with. So uh, if you don't know if you have a, any immigrants in your family, you still may find individuals that came through the country and mention some uh, that were already there uh, before that. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you uh, a match that I have with Jacob Singer. He's one of uh, the individuals in my tree. And my heritage is telling me, and I'm using now the 1940 census, one of my preference uh, in census uh, records. And it's telling me that I am gaining the residence that I am missing on my tree. So very similar to the smart matches. Uh, I will be able to see all the information that my relative provided to the census. I can compare all the details. I can keep scrolling down, see other people mention in the record and check that the wife is the same that I have and the daughter is the one that I have. So definitely this is my guy. I can also see the record, okay? And you will be able to low or zoom in, uh, you will be able to download the record and keep it also for your record, for your backup in your computer. Uh, once I have checked and everything matches, I am going to confirm the match. Same uh, procedure, left side is my tree, right side is the record. And this is why I love the 1940, because 1940 is the only census that ask for residence in 1935. There is no census in 35. The census, uh, as you well know now that you have filled the 2020 census, uh, the census happens every 10 years. So 1930, 1940, but the government at that time wanted to know exactly where people were living in 35. In here, you can see that my uh, cousin actually moved from one place in New York to another. So by clicking on the arrows in the middle, I can extract that information. You can see already the source citation arrow, which is clicked by default. I have more people down there. And when I get to the bottom, I just play a click uh, save to tree. And now I see that my record and my information has been saved to my tree. Now I am in the bottom of the record and you will notice 
that there is a new section here called the record detective or related records. What is this? Well, because we know already that this record is important for you and it has information about other people, what MyHeritage did is run the search and brought you either records or matches, individuals in other family trees that matches your people in the uh, record. So you can click on any of those new leads. You can analyze it. You can approve and uh, uh, confirm. You can extract the information. You will get more records and you will be keeping doing that probably till four o'clock in the morning. So don't blame us for that. So the record detective will bring you related records and related people who are in the MyHeritage database and they are related to you based on the information in your tree and the information in the new record that you just have reviewed. Now, uh, normally, you know, records uh, that you know, birth, marriage, death, military records, uh, school records, they are all structured. You know exactly which field is the name, which field is the place or the year. But MyHeritage has a very good collection of newspapers. And this is wonderful with the only problem that, at least for us, we don't know exactly which, uh, which fields are in the newspaper. But we have... Uh, we have scanned in OCR, Optical Character Recognition, those uh, uh, newspapers, and we have been able to analyze what are the pieces, the important pieces for genealogy, like obituaries, weddings, graduations, and some relevant newspapers for you. And those are going to be included as regular results on any smart and any um, I'm sorry, search or ma record matches that uh, that you have. Um, I know that you are in LA, but I have a very good friend down in California and San Diego, not so far from you, Randy Seaver, very good genealogist and blogger, if you know him. Uh, we gave him this technology as a heads up before we released it a couple of years ago. Uh, and he was really astonished with it. Let me show you why. Because he had in his family tree a relative named Frederick Thomas Blanchard. You see when and where he was born, when he was died. He had basically all the information that you can think about this person. And my heritage was able to bring him record matches. Now, one, um, one of those record matches was with a newspaper. Uh, in this case, this is the Oakland, uh, Oakland Tribune from 1912, where we see that Mr. Blanchard just married his sweetheart from school, uh, and they lived uh, happily ever after in a cozy uh, bungalow in California. So this is information that Randy probably will have not get to it if we don't have a technology that will bring him matches with newspapers. But we went further from that because we had information about they living in Los Angeles and Mr. Lanchard being a professor. So we found him also in our yearbook collection and we found 10 of those yearbooks like the one you are seeing right now in 1925 so he gained not only a picture but the whole story about their relatives i would like to bring you one more very small example and this one is very special because it's coming from our own CEO, Gilad Yafer, which is actually a genealogist himself, and this is his family tree. You can see a regular couple, Salomon and Sarah, uh, marrying, uh, 
having kids, everything looks fine. I have dates, I have places, I have everything. But my heritage find this beautiful article for Gilad. And immediately you can say, wow, how lucky he found a picture of the groom and bride. He can add that to the family tree. But if you take just one more second and you read what it says below the image, it says love needs no words because both the groom and the bride were deaf and the marriage ceremony had to be performed in sign language. This is what we call the flesh and the bones. This is the nice histories that you are going to be able to extract from newspapers. And newspapers as obscure as, as this one from Kansas, uh, Lawrence, uh, Kansas in 1938, probably a newspaper that Gilad will never reach if it's not by the record matches. Now, in the same principle, we would love you to visit my heritage as often as you can, but we will send you emails every time that we find a new record match for you. So be attentive to your inbox. Now, up till here, everything has been in English, and I have been saying that my heritage supports a lot of languages and not only people building family trees, but some records are actually in other languages like Hebrew, Russian, Ukrainian, Greek. And the problem is that most of genealogies don't know all those languages. Uh, most search are only done in one language, the language that uh, you communicate most probably. And the result is that you are actually losing a lot of information, but that is until today, or better say just about a year ago, a couple of years, when my heritage developed the uh, option of global name translation. How does it work? Very easy. We have a Jacob Schmidt. Uh, probably you know him by other names like Jake Smith or Jacobo Schmidt or the other phonetic variations that the name has both in English or Latin characters or in the other languages that you may or may not be able to read. So what does it mean is that whenever you are searching in your language and you are seeing now on the screen how I performed a search in English for Alexander Abramov, my heritage found him on the Ukraine church books in the 1800s, but those records as expected in Ukrainian are written in Russian or Ukrainian. And I don't understand that, but my heritage retransliterate back from the record into English. So I know that the first one is Alexei and the second one is Alexander. And the third one is Efremov in not Avramov. So I know the second one is my guy. Now that I have found it, I can go and ask for some help or even Google Translate and uh, understand better what the record says for me there. Another feature that my heritage has for you is the pedigree map. And what's happening here is that my heritage takes all the birth, marriage, death, others, events, photos that you have in your family tree up to 10 generations back and plots that into a Google map. So you will see a list of countries uh, in each country. And you can do this, I'm sorry, for the, your extended family, immediate family, ancestors or descendants for any person in your family tree without a problem. And you will see a list of countries. And for each country, you will see the different locations in the country. You will also see and be aware of possible mistakes that you may have committed. And this is just only according to Google Maps. But my heritage will do its best to bring you the right 
spelling or the right location. Uh, you just need to be aware that borders moved. And if you are referring to a country or a place that doesn't exist anymore, it's going to be a little bit problematic. But still, most of the places probably you are going to find and you are going to be able to see exactly where your family is coming. The advantage of this is that from this screen, you can actually edit all the entries that you have for a particular place and you can correct mistakes in just one click. You can also select a particular place and you can see all the events and all the family members that uh, went or lived in that place or had an event in that place. Okay, now, uh, because we are not perfect and sometimes we make mistakes, MyHeritage has another feature called the Tree Consistency Checker. This will look into your information and will alert you about mistakes, errors or notes or warnings uh, in your tree depending of the different settings that you have set there. And we have up uh, 37 of those errors, warnings, or notices. Things like, for example, you may have a kid born after the death of the parent, or you may have a kid born when the parent is too old or too young, uh, or a person is uh, marked alive too old or, or dead too young. All that uh, you can customize and you can select which ones you want to be alerted siblings uh, with the same first names or with different last names. Those are things that may be right in your genealogy, meaning for whatever reason, two siblings may have two different last names, probably one from the mother and the other one from the father, and that is a possibility, uh, but you can decide uh, if worthwhile to uh, check. Uh, sometimes you can actually fix some of the things right from the list or if you would like to ignore those things you can use those arrows and a little x that will appear here in the corner and you can say yes this is like this this is not a mistake i know that's how i want it and just ignore this don't bother me anymore now a few words about the dna the DNA, as I said, is divided into two, the genealogy DNA and the health DNA. Uh, the genealogy DNA is going to give you both ethnicity and matches. The health DNA will give you both ethnicity, matches, and the health report. I'm going to concentrate right now in the matches. Uh, I don't really believe on doing DNA tests for the ethnicities, but if that is the reason you choose, uh, you're more than welcome. I think that DNA is meant just to discover family uh, that we have, and we have not been able to discover them through the regular research. So we go to the DNA, and my heritage will alert you about those matches, and you will be able to filter and to see those matches by different criteria. For example, uh, and very, very important, please, if you will do a DNA test, if you have already done a DNA test, and if you have it in on my heritage, or for that matter, in any other place, please have a family tree together, because that's the only way that you and the other person will be able to find how you are related. Now, in my heritage, you already heard about the smart matches technology. So if you have a match, a DNA match with somebody, and you have also smart matches between both of your trees, chances, huge chances are that you are connected through that uh, person. Uh, also, if you shared some surnames, if you shared some places, that's definitely uh, a good key for the match. Uh, or if you are close relative or extended family, those are the ones I will uh, suggest you to check first. 
uh, or by location or by ethnicities as well. Uh, you can see that you can sort those matches by names or by amount of segments or by the most recent ones. And every week, MyHeritage will bring you new DNA matches. Now, not only new DNA matches, but MyHeritage is going to tell you uh, some of the insights. If, again, you have a theory of family relativity, which may prove how you are related, or the names that you have in common or the places that you have in common with the other person. Now, all what I have shown you today can be done also from a mobile app, uh, and we have both Android and uh, iPhone technologies supported. The great, big advantage is that with this, you can take your research wherever you go without any problem. Some of unique features are a timeline that you can create automatically from your phone, or my favorite, the audio recording. You can do an interview uh, or just record notes about a person and they will go up to the website automatically tagged with the person that you are using. Of course, that if you find any relative uh, in uh, a family event or something like that, you can take a picture and automatically upload it and assign it as his personal picture as well. So, um, I hope that you uh, enjoyed and uh, remember all the technologies that I have mentioned. Uh, of course, this is not all what my heritage has for you. I only had some limited time and I wanted to leave a little bit for questions from your side as well. But I can assure you, my heritage is working already in new discoveries and new technologies and new things to uh, help you with your technology. One of those I definitely need to mention is the in-color feature, the ability to uh, colorize black and white photos or revitalize photos that were in color one, but right now because of the age or the time, they look like very uh, reddish, brownish, and they lost all the color. My heritage will be able to restore or bring new colors into those pictures. And this is free and unlimited until April 22. Uh, after that, you will need to have a premium or complete subscription on my heritage. We recently also improved that, adding a colorization settings. So now you can play and you can decide the values that you want to be applied in the colorization process. And very soon, we're going to release more features related to images, so stay tuned for that. I will also like to share with you the education page of MyHeritage, the knowledge base, education.myheritage.com. Over there, you will find webinars, you will find articles, you will find how-to videos, you will be able to learn more about how MyHeritage works and how you can make the most of the website. I would like to invite you to follow me as well in social media. Uh, over there is where I mostly post all what my heritage is doing, uh, other webinars and other lectures that I'm doing, uh, new releases. You're more than welcome to stay tuned with me through those channels. And uh, now only to thank you for inviting me uh, and have this opportunity to address you, to tell you a little bit about my heritage. I will be more than happy to answer the questions that you may have, although I'm not seeing anyone coming in. Uh, I see hands that are raising. Uh, I have no problem opening the microphones if you like to just uh, voice your question. And just in case, that you remember that question right after we finish or later. Tonight, I'm leaving you with the address of our help section, myheritage.com help. That will bring you 
to the FAQs. Hopefully, you will find over there the answers or you will be able to contact our support department. So once more, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, okay, so I see um, Constant is asking about Randy Sievers. Um, Constance, I will just tell you uh, to Google Randy Sievers. I will add the word genealogy. Uh, I think it's genie amusing, uh, amusement, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just don't be confused by Randy Sievers, the baseball player. Okay. Uh, Karen is asking, what if you have a common name like Brown or White or Smith, I may add? How do you know if you have the correct family? Well, uh, Karen, that is why you have the other relatives. That is why you have a birth and a, and a death or a marriage or any other piece of information. Definitely, um, if you have common names like those, uh, it's going to be very difficult to find, but definitely not impossible. You will need a little bit more of information about your family, uh, and you may need to use a little bit of your gut feelings, and, and probably they will work for you. Um, I see that Linda has uh, her uh, hands uh, up. Linda, hello. Hello, Linda. One more time. Um, Okay, so you wrote your question. For some reason, we cannot hear you. Linda and Constance or Patrick, I will go with you if you need. Um, okay, I see Patrick is, I'm sorry, Patricia is already asking, what is the strength of the collections? Any particular areas? Yes, Patricia, the world. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of records from the US. But because we are in Israel, because we have uh, one foot in Europe and the other uh, in the US uh, practically, uh, we have a lot of collections from Europe, from uh, Germany, from uh, Norway, Scandinavian countries in general. We have a few Australians as well. We have some Latin Americans. Uh, I do know that we have uh, exclusive collections uh, thanks to an agreement with the Netherlands uh, archive, the Holland archives. So go ahead. You can go into a search engine on MyHeritage and you can actually, uh, or in the collection catalog, and you can filter by countries and you can see what we have for each of the um, countries that we have. Uh, Constant is asking about MyHeritage having access to Castle Garden. It's my belief, Constance, that uh, the Ellis Island database includes Castle Garden. Castle Garden was used before and after Ellis Island, uh, but the database, I think it's all under the Ellis Island, um, the Ellis Island database. Uh, I don't see a place to ask a question, only this one. Yes, Joanne. This is exactly the place where you should be asking a question, so feel free to write a question and I will answer. Uh, what differences the DNA test of my heritage from Ancestry and others as constant? Um, well, basically, it's the same. It's an autosomal DNA test. Uh, let's say it's compatible. Uh, if you have tested with Ancestry, you can upload to MyHeritage and get results. The big difference is the database. The people that have tested in Ancestry and people have tested on MyHeritage. Uh, Ancestry has more people. I agree on you, with you on that. But MyHeritage has more European people. Ancestry focus uh, their sales in the U.S., my heritage, at least half of the database, if not a little bit more, are people from Europe and other parts of the world. So yes, Yuan, you can export from Ancestry and bring it to my heritage. If you're talking about DNA for sure, if you're talking about your family tree as well, the answer is yes. Uh, in a family tree, 
uh, you should be looking for the word JETCOM, export JETCOM, and JETCOM is the standard format to move family trees to one place to the other. Uh, those MyHeritage has MT or YDNA test, no constants, unfortunately. MyHeritage only deals with autosomal. The MT DNA, for those who are not familiar with the term, is maternal. The Y DNA is the paternal. And the reason why we don't deal with them, it's actually very easy. Those tests will provide you with the branch of your mother, 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 mother side, or your father, 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 father side. You're missing huge amount of people in the middle. So the autosomal test will have and will show you all the individuals, ancestors from you up to 10 generations. That is why it's better to do an autosomal test unless you are specifically looking for something in one of your father or mother branches. Uh, Linda is waiting patiently here for her question. I noticed you initiative uh, to Romanian Catholic Church. Uh, okay, can you share plans for the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Roman Catholic records? Um, well, Linda, I need to be honest. I have no idea. Uh, I do know our content team works very hard both in the US and around the world. I do know about an initiative uh, of scanning and indexing Greek records, uh, which is already uh, being done and very soon to be released. Um, basically, if you have a lead, I will be more than happy to hear about it and give it to the content team. But most of the times it doesn't depend on my heritage, is on how the other party is willing to share or to work together. Um, even if we offer to scan the records and to give them uh, a copy of whatever index we create, not always everybody is happy to share. Are there any discounts on my heritage signups right now? Um, well, yes, it's my understanding that we are at this time running uh, a discount, a promotion called, if I'm not mistaken, staying at home, because we understand that um, all of us are now uh, isolated at home and what a very perfect time to do genealogy, to uh, build your family tree, and to research all those databases. Uh, just go to myheritage.com and look over there. You should see a banner uh, with a promotion, uh, or you can just go into social media, probably is advertised there in any place. Um, okay, so I have 10.45 p.m. Uh, that's my time. I guess it's uh, 12.45 for you in L.A. Uh, I don't see any more questions here. Uh, I don't know, Suzanne, if you have anything else uh, to say, but for me, it has been a real pleasure uh, to be able to share all the information with you. Okay, Daniel, I actually do have a few questions myself. Go ahead. Um, first of all, what happens if you have more than one tree in Ancestry.com and you want to import them into uh, MyHeritage? Um, are you allowed to have more than one tree in MyHeritage or is it just one tree only? No, you can have multiple trees in one website without a problem. I will just would want to warn you when you are inviting members of of the family or, or the different trees to come into the website. The permission is per website. So everybody will be able to see all the trees and all the information that you have there. But yes, you can have two, five, ten, a hundred trees with no problem. Okay, that's that's good to know. Uh, because mm -hmm. sometimes when you invite someone to see your website, you know, you're not really you don't want them to see all the information. Exactly. Um, so that, that helps out. Now, um, by any chance, do you have also a YouTube channel? Uh, yes, definitely. YouTube.com slash MyHeritage. 
you have a lot of videos over there. Uh, some of our educational videos are also up there. Some of our commercials and success stories are there. Yes, definitely. Wonderful. Okay. Now you talked about the education portion of your website. Uh, do you have to be a paid member in order to access that? Not at all. Not even a subscriber. Uh, it's an independent part of the website. Uh, we will suggest you to even like to register there or or to subscribe to the newsletter uh, where we keep you up to date with the new information that is going up, and we are adding information and, and videos and articles over there on a weekly basis. Uh, in fact, now we're uh, adding twice a week because people are busier uh, in, in the house looking for information. Um, but yeah, you don't need to register. You don't need to be a member. It's totally free out there for you. Wonderful. And then um, when I was at Roots Tech, I heard you talk about you know the new directories uh, database that's available, mm -hmm. and you talked a little bit talked a little bit about the artificial intelligence and and what that does for the directories. Could you just spend a moment talking to my students about that artificial intelligence and, and what that results in? Sure. Uh, so what we did is we scan the directories and we applied OCR and we understood what the optical character recognition is OCR stands by. Uh, we understand the words. Uh, the huge problem was that those directories have abbreviations um, and then you have addresses and we had to teach the computers to understand what those abbreviation means uh, and understand the addresses and then we went one step further than that uh, we look for the same person in the same place or at least in the same area because we have multiple years uh, multiple uh, directories for uh, that same area so we combine them all together and we put families also together because if let's say we have a John Smith in a property during many, many years, and then uh, the property goes on the name of Jane Smith, uh, we can, uh, and we have an age of the person, we can uh, assume that this is the wife or the daughter, uh, but most chances is the wife. And then a couple of years after you see back uh, another name uh, like James Smith, and then you know that this is the son, so all those um, leads and all those pages of directories related to the same family are going to be found in the same uh, place. So it's not just, again, John Smith. It's John Smith uh, with a profession living on a particular place on a particular address. Uh, the other thing is the professions. You can see all the pr different professions and advertisements that your relatives did during all those years. Uh, you can guesstimate when the person died, again, when the property uh, passed uh, hands, or you can see multiple generations being in one location. It is really an interesting uh, collection. At the beginning, you may think it's not genealogy relevant because, again, it doesn't have uh, the, the very facts of uh, the people, but if you find your relative over there, then you could go back to those counties and, and ask for records in the county and ask for maps and see the different properties and the different things that your family were doing during those times. Wonderful. Yeah, I was very, very impressed with the, the with the directories. In fact, I've used it several times since I've been home from Roots Tech and I'm, I'm really amazed by how powerful it is. Excellent. Um, I have here one question from Joseph. I don't want to leave him with a question. Uh, he said he tested with <laughs> any possible company out there. Uh, he mentions Ancestry, 23andMe. Uh, he did a health test with Helix DNA. Uh, and he's asking which one will be the best to upload to MyHeritage. In this case, MyHeritage will only allow you Ancestry, 23andMe. We also support living DNA and family tree DNA, but in order to answer your question, 
the best will be to upload all of them because each one tests, let's say, 95, 98% of the same parts of the DNA, but each one has uh, like a little bit gap between uh, one and the other. So by uploading from different vendors, we're going to have a better picture of your DNA. And once you upload and you assign all those to you, uh, we will understand and we will build the digital file with all the information and we will provide you once with better matches. Do you have uh, yeah, any uh, other questions, Susan? Uh, yeah, I, well, not so much. Well, actually, I do have one other question. What happens if you, uh, uh, through my heritage, what happens if you have multiple uh, DNA kits? Like, let's say I have, let's say I administer the kit for my uh, husband's sister, and I also administer the kit for myself and for my biological brother. Um, how does all that click into the one family website? Well, uh, each kid should be assigned to an individual in your family tree. Um, in my case, and, and probably yours and most of other cases, uh, people agree to test, but they don't want to be bothered. So you are the only one receiving emails, uh, both from my heritage about new matches or other matches trying to contact uh, the person. If the other individual decided that he also wants to be in the loop, then uh, he also will receive information about that specific uh, DNA test. You will see an icon, a purple icon on the tree whenever there is a DNA test for that individual. And you as a manager, you will have access to all of them and you can see each one individually and how they match uh, themselves, like if, if you have your husbands as well, you will see the match between your husband and uh, his sister, but also how each of them matches other people out there. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, okay, do you see any other questions from the class? Uh, no, it seems uh, oh. that they understood everything or they follow asleep during the class. I don't know them, <laughs> you know them. <laughs> They fell asleep. <laughs> okay, well, if there's no other questions, then I want to remind the class uh, that if there's anyone who needs one-on-one -on -one help with their research uh, after we sign off with this presentation, uh, just uh, just send me a real quick email and I'll send you a, a new link uh, to do a video conference with me directly. Uh, so with that, I wanted to say thank you very, very much to Daniel. Uh, I, as always, Daniel, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, your presentation. I've seen you many times over the years. Uh, and uh, have talked with you at the convention, so uh, both in Southern California as well as in Salt Lake City. Uh, so I will say thank you very much on behalf of my class, and um, I'll go ahead and let uh, the class log off and say thank you for everyone who logged on today, and uh, we'll hope to see you next week. With pleasure, and uh, just uh, make the most of this time and do genealogy. Good luck with your research. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>